Well, hello everyone. It is Sunday. Yay. Um, yeah. Oh, about to knock stuff on the floor. Uh, so you didn't get to see anything that I made on Wednesday because we had that marathon, uh, inventory video. So you should have seen how long it was before I cut a lot of fluff out of it. <laughs> it was, I knew it was going to be a long one, but that one was, that was just crazy. That took me the entire day between sorting, showing, editing, uh, uploading. It that was the entire day on Tuesday, but it needed to be done. So I know where I'm at now. I know what I have. What I need to make, even though what I need may not be necessarily what I want to make. But because Heather was picking on me when I showed her the picture of my totes, how many I had, and she told me I needed a market. Well, I found myself some more markets. And it just so happened that that same day I got an email from this event coordinator that I've worked with before. Uh, just one time, and that one was an okay market. It was really hot. It was outdoors. I'm hoping this will be a little better. So I signed up for three. It's in Brooksville, and it's a lot more local to me, so I won't have to travel as far to get to a market to set up. They're in the evenings, only for three hours from six to nine. But the first one is September 20th. So I'll get to test out some of these newer things before Sue and I in October. So it's like September 20th, the Friday after mine and Sue's market, and then the Friday night before my big one in November, which that one's going to be rough because probably won't get home till almost 11, then have to try and go to sleep and then head out early in the morning to set up. And all of these, is six total so far, all of these are outdoor markets. So my canopy is finally gonna pay for itself. So there is that. <laughs> and then I've been spending money this week, but not necessarily on patterns, on tangible items. So I see everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people, they use these, um, they're called luggage bags or storage bags. So I went looking on Amazon and I ordered myself some. And I, at first I wasn't sure. I mean, cause I got a really good price. I got an eight pack. They had like a 30% off coupon. I paid like $22. And I'm like, I think they're gonna be small, but they're actually a lot bigger than I thought they were gonna be. Like, I mean, I think that this is bigger than my black totes, but the straps go all the way down to the bottom. I thought it wrapped around, but it doesn't. Um, the hope is, now I can't get it folded back up. The hope is that it'll be easier to carry and it'll take up less space in the car. That's what the hope is for these. Plus I'll be able to see what is in them. So like if I don't have everything set up and somebody asks, do you have, and if I know I have it with me, I'll be able to see where it is instead of digging through tote after tote. So I ordered these and then I ordered myself a couple of other things and only one other thing has arrived. But I wanted a good way to display my keychains. Now, before, I've been using my um, cube shelves and setting it up like a 
like this, like a picture frame and just hanging them on that. But I, I have a different plan for my cube shelves this time and I'll get to test it out in September. So I ordered myself some spinner racks and this, of course, we all know I have this size perception thing. Even though they give measurements, I can't tell. This is a lot taller than I thought it was, and I am fine with that. I am absolutely fine with that. This part here, righty tighty, lefty loosey, is adjustable. So you can adjust the height of your, your uh, thingies. <laughs> And, of course, it spins around. But I had a couple of things in mind for this. Not just the keychains, but, you know, like my little birds on a swing. And then I'll, I'll be able to show you here when I show you these other things. The birds on a swing, the keychains. Well, this was a two-pack, and I think it was like $29, and you get two of them. And these metal things, whenever you get, look into display pieces, they're not cheap. So it came with two, and it shows a picture of three and being taller, and it even says on the box, new, three, well, no, <laughs> it comes like this. You get two. So somebody, somebody needs to tell China that that is false advertising, and I didn't expect a three-tier. I wanted a two-tier. I did not expect a three-tier, but... The other thing that needs to be told to China is we need assembly instructions. There was no assembly instructions and it wasn't that it was hard to put together. It was like, what direction does this go? And so the, the actual pictures on the box did help with the assembly, but I think it was a good price to get two for that price. So I ordered those and I've ordered a couple of other things, but they're not here yet. And I don't expect them. Uh, well, I expect one thing to come tomorrow and the others, like one of them is towards the end of the week and the other one won't be until like mid-September. So I won't be able to show you those and I don't want to spoil the surprise and tell you what it is yet. So... Let's see what have we been making this week. Now, when we um, when we did my inventory, there were a few things that I needed to make. And out of the stuff on my table, I want to say I got two different type items made from that list. But... And then I'm just messing with other things. I couldn't help myself. So the first one was I need still one more rose, the octopus. This is an all from Jade pattern. Parfait chunky. 28 millimeter eyes. Um, so I want to have at least one more and that would give me a total of three on these. So I did get one done. It, you know, and I have to mix it up to keep it interesting. I can't, I, especially if it's something that takes a little while to make, you know, if you're talking a little mini bird and you're done with it in 20 minutes, you know, I could do six or seven of them and, and be cool with it. But when it's a bigger item, I like to mix things up. So the other thing that I did, and these, this I actually did before my video, but because I hadn't shown them to you yet, I didn't want to add them to my inventory video. So the little squids that I make, and now I can't think of the person's name, <laughs> but I'll post it. I wanted to see, well, actually I saw Stacy do it. And she t used the same baby squid pattern and used, I want to say she used a size seven. I have one skein of seven and it's a green, so I didn't want it green. So I just used some of the uh, big twist 
plush that I just got in. And I took that baby squid pattern and this is a good size. I still haven't made my parfait order, but this is the parfait chunky. So there's a big size difference. And this one, I need this blue to finish this up, but I haven't made an order yet. So I did this one in pink and then I had started this one, but I didn't finish it. I finished it like the next day and I did this one. So I have these two big squid. Now I would like a third, so I might do a third one. I don't know. I just think it should be like odd numbers, three, five, seven, nine, you know, I don't know, just like three, three is cuter than two, if you know what I mean. I hope somebody does because I don't know what I mean. All right, so we did the two squids. So we have two squids and an octo with, I, I oh my gosh, I wouldn't even attempt rose in this. It would be absolutely huge very huge so because i've added this these three other markets i was like okay so for september i will need some loaf cats and i decided to try the same pattern that heather from cottontail crafts has been using and it's a free one on instagram so i looked it up and i made it and I thought, oh my gosh, this is so small. Like, I even added an extra round in between the, the two legs. This is in Parfait Chunky, and it is so small. So, then I was talking to Sue about it. And I, because when she, sh she was using this pattern as well. And when she showed, when Sue showed hers... They look so much bigger. And I know everything looks bigger when you're looking at it on camera. Everything looks bigger. But I mean, hers looked a lot bigger. And I thought, is it yarn under versus the yarn over thing? So I was t chatting with her and, and I'm like, I'm going to try it. They, they don't take that long. So I did one with yarn over. This one's yarn over. The one with the white tip is yarn under. And there is a little bit of a difference, but still, Sue's looked so much bigger. And I'm sure it's the camera. And I'll get to see on Tuesday for sure. You know, she, I'm going to see all her little plushies. But these just look really small. And we were going to try and do the loaf cats and the loaf dogs, you know, right around the same price range. But these are so small, at least mine are, I don't think we'll be able to do it because the loaf dogs came out much bigger. So I did these two and I'm like, I'm still going to use them, but I still want to be able to put $15. So I went ahead and whipped up some boxes. So I'm going to do at my September market the little loaf cats, the little minis, in a box, probably for $15. So I have the gray. And it's funny, this right here, I thought I did my math right, and I was trying to get that to come up in the middle here. And it ended up being over to the side. And I tried it again on one other one, and I got closer, so I think I have it figured out which stitches it's supposed to be to get it so that it like, has that little color peak. So we have this one and the slightly bigger one. So I was like, well, I need to make a black cat. So I did a black one and it came out even smaller than the gray one. And I'm like, what the heck? Now I was struggling with the black yarn. This was, this parfait black was like working with Sweet Snuggles Light with the shedding issue. But turns out 
I missed around in the face. So that's part of the reason why it looks so much smaller. But he gets his own little box too. And we had to do a Toby, right? We got a Toby. And this is one where I all, whoops. I got so much closer. So I, I think I have it figured out now what stitches to put that in to get that little peak. And he got a little few little white spots. So we have a Toby. And I have one more box. Um, and I'm going to do a white one for this. I just haven't gotten to it yet. So that would give me five. My oh, odd number. That would give me five for to go with me to the September market. I had an evening there where I was like, I just want to do stuff that's quick and easy. And I had seen this little frog pattern on Instagram. And I wanted to give it a try because it was different. And I was hoping that it would come out small enough to put on one of the little swings. But it was a little bigger than that. A little bit bigger. So this little frog, I think these are really cute. It's completely no so. And after the first one, these whipped up really fast. So I did a few. <laughs> and actually there's six, so I just changed up. But these, these worked up very, very fast. And they're just a tiny bit too big for that swing. I guess I could make the swing bigger and, you know, make it wider. And these, I might be able to make them fit. I don't know. I'd have to test it out. But that's what I originally wanted to do, was to do these to put them on the little swings. So I really need a, a smaller, a small frog pattern for that. All right. So because I was in the mood to make small items, I did a few, because I only had three and I need more. I did a few birds on a swing. And that's one of the reasons I wanted the little spinner so these could be displayed properly. So I did the yellow chick and then a flamingo. And then I started thinking, because I had somebody ask when I was at Trinity if I had a bee on a swing. And I said, I did not, but that is a good idea. So I was trying to do a bee that would be the right size to sit on a swing. So this one was my first try and he looks pretty cute, right? I think he does. And he is, I did him no so. Surface crochet for the little wings, surface, surface crochet for the little antenna. So I did him and I thought, I think I can do better. I think I can do a better job. So I tried another one. And this one, I think, tighten up the swing so that he sits properly. I think this one turned out a little better. Let's see. Now I still gave him the little bobbles so that it looks like he's sitting and his legs are out. And what I did <laughs> is I used, why are you tilting forward? That's better. 
I used the um, bird pattern on this one, and it's actually sitting better. I did not use the wings. Um, I just stitched it around to make it look like it was gripping it. But on this one, I tried letting it keep its wings and I used them like arms to attach it to the swing. But I like the color variation on this one better than this one. I don't know, it's just weird. Just a little weird. So that's why I wanted the spinner. So I could have them on this. Now this one's a little long, so maybe he needs to be on the bottom. I must have been looser with my chain. But that was one of the other reasons for wanting the uh, spinner, besides the keychains, was for the birds. I could raise this up. or lower this down. That's better. So I wanted to do that. And then I showed you guys the Christmas pickle and I know they have little poems that go with it. So I was looking for the little like sayings or poems or whatever you want to call it, rhymes. And I came across, there's actually a lot of Christmas pickles on Etsy, but this one shop that I have bought some um, other like digital printables from, she has a little saying, it comes with tags and, um, a little rhyme or poem that goes with it and the way she showed her pickle and I think I might do my pickle the same way is she has a red bow on it I was trying to do the Santa hat so this is smaller and it would be like an ornament that you could hang in the tree well I wasn't this one kind this one kind of came out okay for the hat well, I didn't keep good notes. And then I was trying to remember how I did it. And then I didn't like how that one turned out. So then that one's okay. And then I didn't like how that one turned out. <laughs> I just, like, I wanted to do it where it was no so. So... When I get up to the top of the pickle and I work on the decreases, I do it in the back loop and leave the front loop open. And that's where I was going to start the hat. And that's what I tried. And mm, I don't know. I just couldn't quite, couldn't quite, um, I mean, they look all right. I just wasn't happy with it because, you know, I'm picky. So I also wanted these spinners to be able to display the hanging Christmas pickles on. And then I am probably going to purchase her tags. Cause you could put comfortably three of them on a spinner and then purchase her little tags with the little poems and stuff to go with it and uh, do the Christmas pickles the traditional way. So I made those. And that was kind of like all my little small stuff that I did. So I did, um, there it is. I'm like, I'm missing one. When I was playing with the loaf cats, I said, well, let me try it out of my big twist plush. So I pulled out the strawberry shortcake color and I started to make one out of this. Let's see, show you the size difference. Parfait Chunky 
Big Twist Plush with an extra round in the belly. And I get to the point where I tried doing the ears and the ears didn't look to me as cute on this. Like, I changed the ears and I'm not like really thrilled with these ears either. I mean, from the back, they look good, but they looked better than the way the pattern said to do it. And I think I was doing something wrong because I did the way the pattern said to do it on these and they turned out just fine. So I must have messed up on something. But anyway, so I changed the ears and then I'm like, oh no, I forgot to put the eyes in. So I had to do embroidered eyes. And <laughs> this kitty cat, he looks grumpy. So he has embroidered eyes and he has his little butt. So I want to maybe make a couple more in this size and I'll try the patterns ears again to see if I can get them right. If not, I'll have to do them like this because they look fine on the small ones. I don't know why it wouldn't, wasn't working for me on this. So I must have messed something up. I just don't know. So then I made a loaf dog, Parfait Chunky. And this is what I was saying. Like we were thinking, you know, having like a $15 price tag on this size for both the, the loaf cats and the loaf dogs. But there's such a size difference. Like if this little guy all by itself was sold at 15, then maybe this little guy all by itself should be sold for 20. I mean, I don't know, it's because there's, there is a size difference. But because I decided to do black, I couldn't use the safety eyes. And so I gave this brown eyes. And I don't know, it just kind of looks like zombie eyes or something. <laughs> just, I just don't know. So this version of the pattern is one where it has the spot on the back, but I just didn't do the color change. I just white on the nose, one white ear, and white on the tip of the tail, and gave it some eyebrows. And that was, to me, it was enough white. Um, I think these I will use the safety eyes on because I'm struggling with the embroidered eyes on these things. I just, I can't seem to quite get them, uh, you know, they just, I don't know, they look like zombie eyes to me. So we have the loaf dog. And then I was like, well, how would that turn out in the Bernat? And I think this color is a leftover Bernat baby. I am not sure because the label was not with it, but it felt just a little bit thinner than the other. So I think it's Bernat baby. I know it's not the big twist plush because I had ordered four solids and four variegated with that one. And I used almost all of that brown, which I ordered some more when I was doing the lovies. And I ordered a two shades of yellow and a hot pink, which was this one. So I'm pretty sure this was some leftover Bernat baby. But anyhow, so I did the loaf dog with this very light tan color and some, it's not white, it's vanilla, I think. So it's a little off white and he's got a little crooked face. So I think it shifted overnight. I'm gonna have to redo that part there because his face is, his little mouth is crooked unless he's like trying to pull a Samantha Stevens. But yeah, so in comparison to Parfait Chunky, oops, 
quite a bit bigger. And then I decided, let me do another one. Because like I said, I've been mixing this up and I did not show you these in the exact order that they were made because I have no clue. But this I know I made yesterday and this other one I know I made yesterday. So I pulled out the big twist plush. That is so hard to say. It's like a tongue twister. And I want to say this is a sunflower color, but it looks like a mustard color. So I did a loaf dog out of that. Just a little bit of that vanilla um, for the nose and the tip of the tail. But the Big Twist Plush versus Bernat Baby, another big size difference. So this one I gave the short ears and this one I gave the long ears. And on both of them, I added an extra row to the ear. Like this, I wanted a little floppier. And I wanted that one just a little bit longer so that when it curved, it, you know, still showed up because the color just, it's like a really bland, plain color and it just kind of blends in together. So we have those two. And of course, because I want it in threes, if I have a chance, because there are other things that are tried and true that I know that sell that need to be made. So I have those two. So then my friend Stacy over at Stacy Makes, she was showing this bird pattern, which I have saved on my Instagram. And I've tried it before because it had a frog hat. And it was bigger than the little one, which I need to make some of the little ones so that I can put them on the swings. And they're pretty quick. And they're just about the right size for these swings. But anyhow, she showed these uh, chubby chicks. And... You can do a frog hat or you can do a strawberry hat or whatever. And she suggested leave the stem off of the strawberry and just do bucket hats. So that is what I did. Now this is shorter than the other um birds that I did, mini birds that I did in the blanket, but because these are wearing the bucket hats, I think they're going to be the same price as the other ones because the other ones are taller. So I have pink and I have purple and let's see. The first one I did was the purple and when I did the brim of the hat, it says to do three single crochets and an increase when you're you're doing the brim. But I did two single crochets and an increase around. And yeah, it didn't end right, but it wasn't a big deal. And then did the last round, which is a slip stitch. So then I said, well, how would it look doing it the way the pattern said? And I did it in pink. So I'm having more of an issue with this wanting to curl up because it didn't have enough increases. And then once you add that round of slip stitch, it makes it want to curl up. So I went, for the other two, I went back to my way for doing the hat. So we got the pink and the purple. And then I did blue. And green. And these colors, there's like, there was so little left of the skeins that I just rolled them up in little balls. And I probably have enough of each of these colors to do another round of these if these were to sell. So I got four um, chicks in bucket hats. <laughs> So that's more to add to my inventory. So new would be the chicks in the bucket hats. Um, cat in a box. 
They're not new. I've made those before and have sold every one of them. Um, but they're new to my list. Cat in a Box and Frogs and Large Squid and Large Loaf Dogs. So the only thing that was increasing my quantities, <laughs> Birds on a Swing, Rose the Octo, and one Mini Loaf Dog. So, <laughs> you guys, I got a problem. <laughs> I have got a problem. I don't know. All right, that is my big news and all my makes for the week. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you Wednesday or I'll just see you in the next video.